Well, it's another Golf Kingdom show, and guess what, folks? They've warned me. We've got to caution you. If you want to get better, if you want to improve your game, we got to put the caution tape out because the Golf Kingdom is where you come to improve your golf game. So once I get the tape out here, we are good to go. Let's bring in our blueprint for our show. As always, we start off with build it. No, it's a curveball. We're going to start off with let it fly, followed by inside the academy where I take you inside a recent golf lesson I had and how I helped a player. In the middle of the show, we've got a great guest coming in. He's a major champion and a great guy. So stay tuned for a special guest in the middle of the show. And then a new segment called Don't Be That Guy. Yeah, don't be that guy. We'll talk about how to not be that guy on the golf course, followed by Grit Golf. And as always, we close with a time to rise. Are you ready? Cause it's time to build here in the golf kingdom and you've been warned. Welcome to the number one golf variety show in the world. Are you ready to build your game? Here's your host, Rob Strano. Well, I know you're used to the show starting with build it, but we're starting with launch it. Yes, we're gonna launch it today. So you think about launching things, we kind of think about this going on. Yeah, we think about, holy smokes, we're gonna launch a rocket. Well. We're launching golf balls when we play. Now here's the key. You've got to understand why golf balls launch the way they do and go where they go. That's a super key. So much like rockets launch and they, they launch and they go up into space and they always go up where they're supposed to go. Uh oh, looks like Houston, we have a problem here with this rocket. This doesn't look good. Does this look like some of your golf shots? Oh no, oh no, look at, oh yeah. This looks like a driver I hit the other day. It kind of started off good, then curved crooked and went out of play. Golf shots, sometimes they go like this, and sometimes you crash and burn, but you got, oh dear, that was a big crash and burn. So sometimes you got to understand why it's going on. Let's get rid of the helmet and talk about why. Simple thoughts here. Number one simple thought is your shoulder alignment. If we're going to let it fly, if we're going to launch it, we got to understand, understand our shoulders, if I set up with my shoulders pointed to the right, my path will be in to out if I'm a right-handed player, out to the right. So that will launch the ball to the right. The ball and my swing will go where my shoulders go. If you find you're launching the ball this way, crank your shoulders this way so you look like this. See how much of this arm you see? This one's kind of tucked to my side and try to swing where your shoulders are pointing. If you need it to launch to the left, Maybe you got to go around a tree. Get this arm up and out, get that shoulder there, and you swing this way, and the ball launches to the left and will stay to the left or fade back or whichever you're trying to do with the ball. So you've got to understand the launch thing here. Now, next part of launch is making sure that it's a solid launch, that the rocket engine takes you where you're supposed to go. And I see a lot of bad movements in the engine that result in the rocket or the ball not going where it's supposed to go. Let's talk about that movement now. Much like any other athletic movement, we move side to side. We move here, we move towards our target. Big mistakes are going away from the target when you swing down to hit the ball. So you might swing here and then you think in order to launch it, I've got to help the ball in the air. I've got to swing up to make it go up in there and you go back and you top it or you hit that far behind it and maybe miss. Understanding your golf launch, your let it fly when you're swinging. So we got the let it fly for setup, here's the let it fly for swinging. As you swing back, you wanna move like you're throwing a ball. You're going forward this way. So to let it fly, you wanna get onto your back leg and then onto your front leg. You wanna feel this foot pushing you forward and get onto your front leg and hit it. This gets the shaft lean forward, it gets you hitting down a little bit, and gets you launching the ball. So let it fly, two things. Direct the ball with your shoulders and launch it with some fire in the engine by getting forward when you hit it. Okay, we have left the studio, come on, join me. We are out here on the Lesson T at Kelly Plantation, the home of Strano Golf Academy, and I had a lesson recently with a player that I had to give them athletic movement to fix their golf swing. Let me explain how this might help you. If you are a jumper and an extender as you come through, 
So this player was coming through and they were jumping out of the ground and their arms were going up and the club was going like that. It looked like this as they came through. I had to teach them an opposing movement pattern to get them out of the jump and the arms going up. I had to teach them to not go up and down in their swing because they were going down. And when you go down, the only place you can go is up. So they went down to go up. So what we wanted to work on was an opposite move. So I put down a stick right here for them. And I said, we're gonna do an athletic movement to learn the opposite of up and down. Up and down, the opposite is side to side. So there's an athletic movement called speed skater where you're here and you go here and here and here. So that's what we worked on. We got athletic and we simply went side, side, hold your level, side, 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 hold your level, side, side. Once we trained that, I gave them a golf club and a golf ball and I said, okay, give me a practice swing and feel side, 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 side. And we got rid of the jumping. So they went to hit a golf shot and it kind of looked like this. They did a nice job of going side, side and through, held their balance and they weren't coming up like this coming through. So if you look at your video and you're an up and downer, try training the opposing move, a little speed skater, a little side, 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 holding your level and then put a club down and a ball and try to feel the same movement and see if you get rid of the ups and downs and get cleaner contact and maybe hit it a little farther too. It's a quick kiss. Keep it simple strano segment. Where we're talking about time and how to get the club face squared impact. Now there's ball flight laws, right? So check out these pictures. So here's your nine ball flight laws. So the club face, the sweet spot, in 0 0.0048 eighths of a second tells the golf ball in about a one millimeter spot to do not only those nine things, but everything a golf ball can do. Sometimes it probably looks like this when you hit a golf ball. Look at the next picture. Here's your ball flight laws. They're all over the place. Let's talk about that and understanding the club face really quick and simple. Now, look at this last picture. Let's understand time. So these are downswing times here using the DWIZ sensor on the wrist. So you can see the downswings are 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. If you're trying to get the club face square at impact, you have 0 0.3 seconds in the downswing. That's no time. What players try to do is you try to get to right in front of the ball and square the face. Look at the face is here and you're in 0.3 or in less than 0.3, you're trying to turn the face. Here's what I'm telling my players. When you start down from here, you've got to start getting the face lined up at impact. You can't wait till the last second. Go practice this. It's like when you start down, you're starting to square the face and see if you stop leaving it open and stop slicing it. This has been a kiss. Keep it simple, strano thing on time and squaring the face that hopefully helps you get rid of your slices and crooked shots. Now stay tuned. We'll be back here with more fun stuff in the golf kingdom, faster than two swings and one putt. Well, I've got a super treat for you here in the Golf Kingdom. We've got a major champion. Yes, Mark Kalkovecchia, a legend from the PGA Tour, is joining us in the Golf Kingdom. Mark, great to have you. Thanks, Rob. Great to be with you. Awesome. I'm going to get right into this. What's interesting about you is something I don't think anybody knows is everybody thinks you're a Floridian, but you actually grew up in Nebraska and then moved to Florida. Talk to us about how that little transition helped your game because you went on to win the Florida State High School Championship and you right. were in Nebraska. Right, yep. I grew up in a small town in Northeast Nebraska, Laurel. 
uh, population 920 at the time. I think it's still about that uh, that <laughs> amount. And uh, anyway, we had a little nine hole course that my dad and his buddies bought a 43 acre cornfield right outside of town. And literally it's just a field with uh, little round greens and, and tees on it. And uh, that's where I learned how to hit the ball. Uh, we ended up moving to uh, North Palm Beach, Florida in 1973 when I had just turned 13. And I had literally had no idea how to hit out of a bunker or, uh, you know, hit around trees or anything. So I had to learn all that stuff really fast. But uh, it was uh, obviously great for my golf game. And uh, uh, in about a year or so, we lived, we, uh, the house dad bought uh, when we moved down, there was right across the street from the Highway 1 from the 14th Green at North Palm Beach Country Club. So every night in the summer after dinner, barefoot, I'd take my shag bag and my sand wedge over there and, uh, and hit bunker shots and chips on the 14th green. So it was, uh, that's, that's kind of where I learned it all. And that's kind of typical to all of us that played professional golf is that we just found ways to get out there and practice and, and work on it. And, and you got so good that you ended up going to the university of Florida. Now I got a university of Florida champ, uh, qu question for you. If you want to do the chomp behind me, go do the chomp, whatever you want to <laughs> do. But it, it, at my school, we did weird things on campus. Like we'd hit one irons out the window of the dorm. Was there yeah. anything weird you guys on the golf team did there at University of Florida that you recall? Uh, in in the, our freshman year, we had to live in uh, in the dorm, and it was called Yon Hall, and it was in the east half of the stadium. Uh, and our windows weren't very big, so we didn't rifle uh, uh, one irons out the windows. But uh, uh, they were having a swim meet. Uh, the The University of Florida pool was right below our room, and. Uh, my roommate stuck a speaker. He had these big giant speakers out the window and blared uh, Van Halen running with the devil. And <laughs> everybody at the pool turned around and looked up at the stadium like, what the hell is that? Uh, so that was pretty funny. But uh, uh, no, my my Trump, uh, partner in crime, uh, Ken Green, uh, through, uh, through the 80s, uh, we, uh, we laced several balls. Uh, uh, out, out of patios uh, for sure and uh, down down streets and uh, at signs uh, you know <laughs> night so yeah that that definitely happened let's, let's get on to, to some some interesting golf stuff so one of the best shots you've ever hit was the flop shot you hold in winning the open championship let me ask you a question what was another shot you hit in your career where you looked at your caddy or he looked at you and you went holy smokes can you believe i just hit that shot what was something amazing that maybe no one knows about because everybody knows that one. Yeah, there's there's been a few uh, a few bunker shots where you know I didn't think I could get it within twenty feet and ended up holding it. Uh, you know the, the the one at the open, obviously that I flew in was was great and timely and very lucky. Uh, but then also I happened to hit two of the best shots of my career on eighteen uh, in regulation and in the playoffs. So uh, uh, everybody knows about those two, but. Uh, I, I've pulled off a lot of a lot of wacky shots from trees and uh, curving the ball and, and, and super floppers. Uh, I think in 92, when I won the Phoenix Open, I was 50 yards left of the green on the down slope where all the people were. And I, I hold that to win by like seven or something. So there's there's been some uh, pretty amazing shots from around the greens that I pulled off. Yeah, that and, and that, that Phoenix stretch, I wrote it down here. In, in Phoenix, you have to tell us, what was it about Phoenix? Because in 89, you shot 21 under and won by seven. In 92, you shot 20 under and won by five. And that wasn't enough. You decided in 01 to shoot 28 under and win by eight. What was it about Phoenix? Yeah, it was just a good place for me. I enjoyed playing at home. And uh, really, uh, the, the Thunderbirds used to give me 200 tickets, and I'd get rid of every one of them. I'd, I'd hear <laughs> You know, I only heard from once a year, but that was fine. And uh, they come out and cheer me on. So I, I really like showing off from my uh, from my friends there. Uh, you know, the golf course suited me, obviously. Uh, I liked every hole. Uh, I could hit my fade off the tee. And, uh, you know, it was pretty severe around the green. So uh, being an aggressive player, you know, I could go with the pins and uh, not be afraid of short-siding myself and, and not getting it up and down. Let's talk about another interesting scoring stretch where you simply went four, three, three, three. Now it doesn't sound like much, but if I'm if I'm correct, you that the British Open, the Open Championship you won, that was the first of the aggregate playoffs where you went four, three, three, and beat, right. beat Wayne Grady by three, and Norman made an X and was done. 
talk to us about the mental difference because you were the first one to ever had to figure out how to do that and you just aced it with flying colors. What were you thinking going into the aggregate playoff for the first time ever? You know, when we got done and, uh, uh, you know, I had to birdie 18 in regulation to tie Greg Norman and then Wayne Grady still had five holes left and a two shot lead. Uh, and then what, he bogeyed the two par threes, 14 and 17, and then didn't birdie 18. And I thought, OK, we're in a playoff. So I said to the RNA guy, I assume we're going back to 18. He says, no, we're going to one, which is <laughs> on the golf course. It's a driver and a 60 yard L wedge. And uh, I said, well, that's a weird hole for a sudden death playoff. He says, no, we're playing one, two, 17, 18. I had absolutely no idea. It was a four hole playoff, even walking over to the first tee. He told me and uh, it just standing kind of that. I said, oh, good. It relaxed me because, you know, sudden death, anything can happen. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, guy can make a long putt on you and you're in there close and miss and all of a sudden it's over. But four holes you got a chance to, to, to catch up or, or anything could happen. And uh, it just relaxed me. And I, I really, really felt good in the playoff and, uh, and played well. And, and you said a key phrase there, it relaxed you. And I tell my players, I, I used to love playoffs, whether it was for a Monday qualifier or anything, because what the thing I did was I looked at every other guy in the playoff and I went, they're more nervous than I am. And that totally relaxed me. And I love right. the thought of that four holes. You just went, okay, four holes, no big deal. I got this. And you and you did. You absolutely nailed it, nailed it and raised the claret jug. And what's it when you look at the claret jug and the names on it, what's one name that you always kind of see to fixate on when you look at it? Well, obviously Jack Nicholas, uh, Arnold Palmer, Tiger Woods, uh, those guys. And and going back to the to the day, uh, you know, even Peter Thompson, who won it five times, Tom Watson. Mm -hmm, amazing. Uh, Hogan. I mean, it's just, there's so many incredible names, Savvy. There's so many incredible names on it. It's uh, it's just really the cool look, uh, cool to look and see, uh, see who won and what year it was in. And uh, uh, I, I, I still have the re replica uh, right, ne right at home in Jupiter, just to the right of my TV. And I look at it every day. I sit on my butt and watch TV. So <laughs> uh, it's actually, I get a good reminder of it pretty much every single day. So that's, uh, that's nice. And, and you gave the engraver a, a big challenge with having to put in Calcavecchia. So that's, that's something everybody else looks at. So one last, last quick question. You're, you're sitting in what my son calls a homey home. Uh, he, he came up with that name when he was a little kid. So you're sitting in your motorhome. You travel in that. Great way to travel. What's your favorite feature of your motorhome? Oh, it's, uh, it, it's, it's the word describes it. It's, it's, it's home on wheels. It, it's your, your home. Uh, uh, you know, on the road, uh, everything you have is in it. Uh, your clothes, your bed, your pillow, your my breathing machine. You know everything. Uh, <laughs> uh, you got the breathing you know, machine. <laughs> uh, I've been sleeping with that for 21 years. My uh, CPAP machine, but you know, it's just stuff you don't have to carry around to to airports. Uh, uh, and I and I love driving the thing. You got the first thing you got to do is love driving it. Uh, now a lot of guys, of course, the uh, the super duper rich guys buy them you know fly in privately have the driver drive the motorhome in and then they just you know stay in it for a week and same sort of thing then the driver comes in drives it to the next stop and uh that's that's the way the uh the the young rich and famous uh travel now but i i think part of the whole fun of the deal is driving the thing uh and just being out on the road and planning your gas stops and planning where you're going to stop and and uh, planning rest areas and having lunch and walking the dogs and it's just uh it's just a lot of fun for us and uh, we, we've we've been doing it now for 14 years uh, so we love it awesome I, there, there's your favorite feature driving your home around the country to play golf mark kalkovecchia a major champion has joined us here in the golf kingdom i hope you out there have enjoyed him as much as i have having him as a guest mark thanks a bunch for being here with us in the golf kingdom my pleasure anytime Thanks again, and stay tuned. We'll have more Golf Kingdom coming up faster than two swings and one putt. This is not about splitting hairs. It's more precise than that. It's knowing to one one thousandth of an inch that every layer of every Chrome Soft is manufactured precisely, which we confirm with proprietary 3D X-ray. Precision technology is not an industry standard, but it is ours. You can hope your ball performs consistently, or you can know it will with precision technology. 
Chrome Soft. Better for the best. Better for everyone. Gosh, I hate fairway bunkers. I can't believe I hit another fairway bunker. Oh, I'm terrible at these shots. Golly. Okay, so I don't know what to do. I'm going to get in here just got to dig my feet in and just swing hard and hope I get it over the water. I just, I don't like not any good fairway bunkers. Oh, great. That's fat. That's in the bunker. I hate bunkers. I don't like fairway bunkers. They're no fun. Hit it in the water again here. I'm going to make another triple. This hole stinks. I stink. I'm no good. Hey, you, get back here. Rake that bunker right now. Fine. I'll rake the bunker. Yeah. I'll come back and rake the bunker. My ball's still in the water. But yeah, I'll rake the bunker. Mr. Smarty Pants, come back and rake the bunker. Here, here's your rake. I'll rake the bunker. There you go. How are you happy with that? There you go. There's your raked bunker. Fine. Tell me to rake the bunker, will you? I'll rake it. There it is. No, 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 no. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. Let me show you a couple keys in the bunker here. Number one key when you watch that whole thing is, I want you when you walk in the bunker to walk gingerly. If you saw that guy, he was pounding around in the sand when he walked in. You should walk softly in the bunker. If you want to make your rake job easier, you walk softly in the bunker. You don't make deep footprints. It makes it easier to rake. No, one of the worst things in golf is to hit in a bunker where number one, they haven't raked it. And number two, the guy was chomping around in the bunker and making deep footprints. Walk lightly. Number two, when you rake, now I grew up with a, a master's champion and he was a hawk when it came to raking a bunker. Man, if you raked one wrong, I heard about it from Mr. Golby. When you rake a bunker, get the rake at an angle like this and lightly, you lightly move the sand back and forth slowly. You want it to look like if you hit it in here and it was your ball, you have a nice clean lie. So I've got the rake at an angle. I'm not pushing it deep into the sand and I'm lightly going back and forth and I'm backing myself out of the bunker as I do it. So the keys are number one, walk lightly. Number two, rake lightly. And when you're done, you want to look at it and go, did I miss a spot? Oops, I missed a deep clod spot there. I'll fix that one. And this is kind of a little deep rake mark. I'm gonna fix that one. I may not have done that, but someone else may have. Do this, and you know what? If you leave the bunker better than you found it, maybe you'll get good golf karma next time you hit it in a fairway trap. Are you ready to get grit fit? Yes, we're gonna work on your balance today. And from what I've heard from Courtney Weber of Grit Golf, it's gonna involve screams. So like the famous Wilhelm scream? Ah. Yeah, we're going to talk about how does screams help your game. So, yeah, what? It's screams. Sc it's not screams. screams. Oh, that makes more sense. It's screens, not screams. So, Courtney, how do screens or screening my body help me with my balance? Absolutely. One of the most common mistakes that we see in the screening process is balance. If you don't have good balance in your golf game, it'll lead to very inconsistent shots on the golf course. Of course, and yes. We, and we don't want that. So what I'm gonna have you do today is I'm gonna have you stand on your right leg. Okay. Lift that left leg up. You're gonna go ahead, once you have that balance, I want you to go ahead and simply close your eyes. Close, close my eyes and do what? And balance there. And balance? Oh, this is gonna get interesting. Here we go. Wait, the room's spinning. Have I been drinking? No. Oh my gosh, the room started to move. One that wasn't me, was it? Yes, it was. One of the things that we're looking for in that balance, if you go ahead and lift that leg up again. Is, Same one? Yes, why not? We're looking for good ankle mobility there as well. So if you want to improve on the consistency of your golf shots and have nice balanced swing, you can go ahead and simply practice this move at home. You can start with your eyes open and as you get better, like Rob here, you can go ahead and close your eyes to get better at golf. My name is Courtney Weber with Grit Golf. You can reach me at Strato Golf Academy. Are you ready? Because we're going to get Grit, grit fit. fit. Here it is. It's time to what? It's time to what? 
it's time to rise. Say it with me. It's time to rise. Let's talk about something that I work on with my players all the time in lessons. That's a time to rise moment. I'm going to give you an example. Show this picture right here. This is the home I grew up in in St. Louis. A little small ranch. I was a little kid. Steep little driveway here. I remember when we planted that tree. Now let's go to the next picture. It's going to be a map of that. There's our house. This was our neighbor's house, and there was a driveway here that was the only circle driveway or half circle in our neighborhood. So it was kind of an odd, weird thing. And this side of the driveway was really steep. So I'd come out of my driveway, come in their driveway, and I was a little kid on my bike pedaling, and the challenge was to come down this steep side of the driveway, make this turn, and not crash into the neighbor's yard. So I'm a little kid. I'd get too much speed. I'd try to make this turn, and I'd wipe out and roll into the neighbor's yard. And so I kept trying. I kept coming down here. I didn't slow down. I kept going, how do I make this turn, not hit that curb, and go rolling into the yard? So the word I would use there is persistence. One of my roles as coach is keeping my players persistent. I have players all the time that go and try something once and go, well, that didn't work. Now what? But what if it worked on the fourth try? or the seventh. I know what I'm giving you is the right thing to make you better. My job is to make you stick to it. So whether it's life or golf, be persistent. If you know you're doing the right thing, you know you're doing the work, stay to the path. Stay on a persistent path. And you know what? Maybe you'll stop crashing, and like I did one day, I made the turn and off I went, just like that. In your golf game and in life, maybe you'll make that turn and off you go and you will rise and go on forever. Well, at the beginning of the show, you were cautioned, you were warned, we're going to help your game. So not only did I give you some tips that were going to help you improve, but we had a great guest also. Let's bring in our strand notes and look at what I want you to remember. Number one, in Let It Fly, I told you, you can direct the ball with your shoulders. If you're a right-handed player, point your shoulders to the right to try to get the ball starting to the right. If you want it to go to the left, point your shoulders to the left. In the Kiss segment, I reminded you about time. You do not have time to wait till the last second before the ball to square the face. If you're leaving it open, start squaring the face way back here and see if it doesn't line up better for you at impact. Then, and don't be that guy, I said don't be that guy. Learn to walk softly in the bunker and rake softly and it'll be an easier rake job for you. Now, let me caution you, again, if you want to find more Golf Kingdom, go out to our YouTube channel. Yeah, YouTube, all the shows are there. All the guests are cut into their own segments, and there's some other fun stuff. So caution, go to YouTube, find us there. And as always, a lot of the shows are on our Roku channel. Thanks for joining me here in the Golf Kingdom. Well, hopefully you hung around to the end. It's our bonus segment with major champion Mark Kalkovecchia, where we do the Fast Five. Are you ready, Calc? Ready. Here we go. Who's got the best homey home, the best motor home on tour? <laughs> uh, of course I do. There we go. I like that. Who's got the second best then? Uh, probably John Daly. Daly's got a, got a good whooping one? He's got a good one, too. Uh, he's got a lot of uh, custom features in it, so it's uh, – it's fun to go over and hang out with him every once in a while. I, I would imagine it's a good party spot. Next question. What's a team that you secretly root for that no one knows about? A team? Yeah. Uh, the Ohio State Buckeyes, I, okay. I think. Uh, a lot of people, uh, we've got the Buckeye license plate on the truck, and everybody looks at me and goes, I thought you were a Gator. I said, I am, but my wife's a Buckeye, and uh, – they're a little better than the Gators now anyway, so uh, I'm, a, I'm a secret closet Buckeye fan. There we go. It's, it's kind of like Ricky and Lucy. you got some splaining to do there, Calc, while you got the Ohio State license plate. Um, exactly. So you're, you're, you're in your, your motorhome there, or you're at home in Jupiter, and it's late at night. You look over, and Brenda's snoring away, and you need a little snack. So you're going down. What's your sneaky snack you're going for? What's your I'll get up. I'll get up and I'll grab a piece of uh, salami, some cheese, and some pickles, and just kind of <laughs> pull it into a ball and fire it down, and then chase that down with an A and W root beer. <laughs> That's my middle of night snack. Are you serious? Salami, yeah. cheese, pickle, and root beer. That's that is a memorable late night sneaky snack. That's it. 
That's that's incredible. Um, so question. If you wanted to laugh for 18 holes, who's going to be in your foursome? The hardest I've ever laughed when I played golf is with two different guys that I can think of. I can probably come up with a third, but uh, Jim Thorpe, uh, who's now since retired, who played on the tour for quite a few years. Uh -huh. in the tour, He had me laughing so hard. I had tears in my eyes. I could hardly swing. Uh, the other guy uh, is Neil Lancaster. Yes. Who little bit of a hillbilly here from North Carolina, and uh, he played this week in, uh, at the SAS Championship, and he again, he had everybody laughing. Uh, same thing. You play with him, you can't stop laughing, and uh, <laughs> I'm not sure who the who the other one would be, but uh, th those two will they'll bring you to your knees. That's, that's those, those are a couple of good characters. Okay, last question in the Fast Five. If you could sing, maybe you can. I don't know that, but I don't think so. If no. you could sing... What band would you want to be the lead singer for? Well, Rush is my favorite band, uh, and uh, they've retired since they've lost their uh, their drummer Neil Peart, and he had to retire. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't think I could handle uh, the Rush singing parts, but uh, uh, I wouldn't mind being a singer for, uh, let's say, a band like uh, Sticks. Sticks, there you go. I turn Sticks up loud enough, I can harmonize with them pretty good, and they've got so many great songs. And every time you hear a stick song, you don't realize it, but you almost know every word. Uh, yes. I don't know if anybody noticed that, but yeah, it, it's it's weird. A uh, very popular band, and uh, I love singing along to them. So, so you you're thinking you're going to take take Getty Lee's place with Rush and over there with Sticks and hit those high notes. I like it. Mark Cal yeah. he can hit the high soft shots, but he's thinking he can hit the high notes too. Calc, thanks for joining us here for the Fast Five in the Golf Kingdom. You got it.